My name is Jack. I'm here to talk about basic water testing. Today we're going to test chlorine, pH, alkalinity, and acid demand. This is your basic water test kit. You can pick up at any local pool store or online on our website. What you'll find inside is your testing vial and your reagents. Each reagent can be purchased individually. They typically have a shelf life of about one year. And now I'll show you how to test for each different chemical. So now we're going to be testing the water. First thing you want to do is take a sample. You always want to get it at least the elbow's length down. Make sure the water is up to the fill line. And that's for the pH and the chlorine. So now that we have our water testing vial filled up to each fill line, we can now start a basic water test. So the small test vial, we're testing the chlorine. All you need to do is simply add five drops into the little vial. To save time, I like to also add the pH drops as well. First thing you want to do to the pH vial is add the number four, which is a chlorine neutralizer. Sometimes the chlorine can be too high and will affect your pH test. So you always want to neutralize the chlorine in your pH test, otherwise you could get funky readings. So I've added five drops of the yellow, five drops of the red, and one drop of the chlorine neutralizer. So now that I've added the testing agents, you can put the caps on and shake it Always use the caps, never want to use your fingers. There are oils on the hands which can cause the test to have irregular readings. Once you have your caps securely tightened, give it a few shakes. Don't need to get very crazy. We've added the agents. You want to, you want to match the color to the ideal range. To do that, it's always good to use the white background, which is located inside the kit. It simply slides in the back. So now we have a white background in place, we can easily read where the chlorine and the pH level are. On the left hand side here we have our chlorine, on the right we have the pH. For the chlorine, you want your chlorine level between one part per million and three parts per million. For this pool, we tested it and found that it was at one parts per million. On the pH, the pH should be between 7.4 and 7.6. We found for this pool, the pH is at about a 7.6, maybe a 7.8. So this pool, for instance, the chlorine is about a 1.0, which is a fairly safe level. However, if it does get any lower, you have the chance of getting algae or bacterial or viral infections. When it gets too high, you can cause burning eyes, itchy skin, and other bleaching problems. As far as the pH, if it gets too low, it becomes more like a lemon, very acidic. If it gets too high, it becomes scale forming, meaning it can cause scale or calcium buildup along your tile, and it will also cause irritating eyes and skin problems. So now we're ready to do the alkalinity test. I filled it up to the fill line, which is located right here on the test kit. To start the test, the first thing you want to do is add the chlorine neutralizer. The chlorine neutralizer is going to neutralize any chlorine that might adjust the alkalinity test and give you off readings. All you need is one to two drops. Now that I've added that chlorine neutralizer, next I'm going to add the number five blue agent. You have to add five drops of the number five. Give it a little bit of a, sh a swirl. So now we've added two drops to the solution number five. You can now add the number three. What you want to do is add each drop and count the swirling in between each drop until the color makes a permanent color change. 
you want to multiply the drops of solution 3 by 10 and that will give you the parts per million of alkalinity. So it took us eight drops to change to from blue to a clearish yellow, which means it's a permanent color change. So eight drops, if you multiply by 10, will give us 80 parts per million. Typical pool should have between 80 to 120 parts per million of alkalinity. The alkalinity is a very important chemical to test. It is the buffer for the pH. So when the alkalinity is low, the pH tends to be low, and when the alkalinity is high, the pH tends to be high. It's very important to check your alkalinity because it could be a, a nightmare to try and adjust your pH without a proper alkalinity balance. So now we're going to be showing you the acid demand test. Using the water sample from the pH test, you can see that the pH is around 7.8, 8.0. We want the pH around 7.4, 7.6. So to determine how much acid we need to add to the pool to lower the pH from 7.8, 8.0 down to the ideal range of 7.4, 7.6, we need to do we need to do the acid demand test. So what we do with the acid demand test is we take the number three solution, we add it one drop at a time, swirling slowly. With each drop you'll notice a color change. The color we're looking for is in the 7.4 to 7.6 color range. You can notice that with each drop it starts to turn a little bit more yellow and drop into the 7.4, 7.6 range. So it looks like it took me about three drops lower that pH down to the ideal range. We can then pull out the acid demand table which is located inside the test kit. This pool is around 10,000 gallons. As you can see it took us three drops and on the chart here it's telling us that it's going to take one and a half pints of muriatic acid to lower the pH of the pool to the ideal range of 7.4 to 7.6. With the acid demand test, it's very important to note that when you're adding the solution 3, if you add more than one drop or less, and your pH goes from an 8.0 and drops rapidly down to a 7.2, you more than likely have problems with your alkalinity. It's very important to stop and test your alkalinity before you go any further with adding acid to lower your pH. So with the acid demand test, this will allow you to know how much acid to add to your swimming pool to lower your pH to the perfect pH level. So today we've tested the chlorine, the pH, the alkalinity, and we've also performed the acid demand test. We've learned that with the chlorine, we need to keep it between a 1 and 3 parts per million. If you drop below a 1 part per million, we'll typically have problems with algae. Also, we run susceptible to having viral and bacterial infections. If we have too much chlorine, meaning we're above three parts per million, we'll typically have problem with bleaching of the eyes and the skin, and it'll be very irritating. With the pH, we typically want to keep the pH between 7.4 and 7.6. If the pH drops below 7.4, the pool will be very corrosive. Not only will it corrode your plaster, but it'll also corrode your heat exchanger, be very irritable to your eyes and your skin as well. When the pH rises above 7.6, it'll be scale forming, meaning you'll get calcium buildup around your tile lines, also in your heat exchanger and your plumbing, and you'll also have very irritated skin and eyes as well. With the alkalinity, you typically want the alkalinity between 80 to 100 parts, 120 parts per million. The alkalinity is a very important chemical to test. It's the buffer for your pH. So if your alkalinity is out of whack, your pH is more than likely going to be out of whack. And without a doubt, it's going to be impossible to get in balance. If the pH 
is in line, typically your, your alkalinity is in line. If you're having problems adjusting your pH, first thing you want to check is your alkalinity. The alkalinity is an easy test to do and it's a very, very common mistake for homeowners to never test alkalinity. I hope we've made this easy for you to test your own water. You can purchase this test kit online or at any local pool store.